I'm going to skip the ropes again since we do the ropes every day. All right. So we are also live streaming this right now. And um, so welcome. Welcome. It's me and Casey once again on Tuesday, April 28th. <laughs> Today's lesson is on um, the overall theme of the lesson is communication. And I thought, why don't we talk about two different ways that we can be more effective communicators in life. And one of those ways is through, I found a whiteboard finally in my, in my stuff. So going to school, do you, can you read what that says? I messages. I messages. And then, so we'll discuss I messages first, and then we'll learn how to say hello in five languages. Does that, does that okay. sound good? Yep. Because I feel like, you know, I don't, you know, for me, I've done a lot of traveling and whenever I would get ready to be going to a new country, I always made sure that I could say hello, thank you, goodbye, but more so hello and thank you were always really important. And then where is the bathroom? <laughs> Um, but we'll start first with iMessages. Um, so what I'm going to do, I guess it's just me and you, so it won't be quite the same. Um, but uh, before we do that, I'm going to share some thoughts with you on things that can happen within communication. OK, and just um, I'll read the I'll read the the message and then i'm going to give a direction so for example i would say something like um if you have ever been confused about what someone you were talking to was trying to tell you snap your fingers okay okay all right so let's do that one first if you've ever been confused about someone you were talking to was trying to tell you snap your fingers <laughs> can you snap yeah okay good <laughs> It's quiet. All right. Um, if you've ever realized that someone misunderstood you, clap your hands. Oh, clap. Is that, do you have your phone? Are you yeah. moving it? No, nope. um, it's right now. Okay. Um, if you've ever felt hurt or disrespected by someone's words, say yeah. In a message? Just in general. Have you yeah. ever felt hurt or disrespected by someone's words, say yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, have you ever had a misunderstand? If you've ever had a misunderstanding with someone, clap your hands. Um, if it sometimes feels difficult to explain what you really mean, snap your fingers twice. Uh, if you've ever wanted to speak up about something, but you felt nervous, clap your hands. Um, if you have ever yelled or said something because you were frustrated or angry and then you regretted it later, say yeah. 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 And then the last one is, if you feel like communicating with other people can sometimes be a challenge, nod your head. All right, so that's just those are just some some things to think about because um, the use of I messages can can kind of help to clear up misunderstanding and to prevent conflict. But I just want to ask you before before we move to the next part, do you know what an I message is, or have you ever heard of that phrase I message? Wait, there's a phrase I know what I message on my phone is. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. So it's not an iMessage like an instant <laughs> message. Oh, I don't know why I didn't think about that. <laughs> okay, have you ever heard of it used differently? No. No, okay. Sometimes people call them I statements. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll do something. I kind of made these videos. I'm a little bit embarrassed, but I'm going to show you anyway. Um, and I've also... Okay, you can't. I can hear you now.
Can you hear me now? Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen with you. All right. So maybe for just mute your mic for a moment, okay? All right. So the first situation that we're going to look at is imagine that you are on the phone with your friend and your little brother or sister or somebody in your house, um, they turn up the music really loudly. So I'm going to show you two different responses to that, okay? All right. Um, Okay, Casey, would you unmute for a moment, hon? Mm -hmm. Okay, I had a feeling, oh, okay. now I got you now. So I had a feeling it might not work because I haven't done it before. So I'm just gonna tell you the, the scenarios and situations. I, I, I thought maybe using a little funny video would be more entertaining for you, but it's not working. Okay, so the situation is that you are watching, imagine that you're, or I'm sorry, not watching, imagine you're on your phone with your friend and somebody in your house starts blasting the music really, really loudly. Okay, so I want you to read the first response that you could say to the person. Ready? I'm gonna show <laughs> you. All right. You could say, you're so selfish. Okay, so that's one response. The other response would be, Okay, I can't hear when the music is so loud. Okay, so think about those two responses. You're so selfish or I can't hear my friend because your music is so loud. What is the difference between those two responses to the situation? You're so selfish is like calling them a name, like selfish, like, I don't know. I feel like that's calling someone a name. And then the other one is just telling them like, you can't hear your friend. So like you're basically asking them to turn it down, but like not saying can you turn it down. I don't know. Exactly. That's it. So the first the one with the I can hear you, that's an example of an I statement. Okay. You you state you, you always start with the letter I or the word I, and then you follow it up with either stating like a feeling or a concern. So I can't hear my music or I can't hear my friend because your music is so loud. It's like an observation, right? The other one starts with you and it insults somebody, it calls them a name. So the I statement, the I can't hear you because your music is so loud, that's, that's sort of what we're trying to move towards in communication. It's just a clear way of stating what the problem is. And then often it's followed up with a solution, right? So it could be, I can't hear my friend because your music is so loud, please turn it down. Right. Versus like blaming somebody or insulting somebody else. Um, all right. Another situation would be I'm not going to try to show you my my video again, although it's pretty funny. Um, so let's say you're trying to meet up with your friend. You're on the phone and you can't hear them here. I can I'll perform for you. OK. okay. All right, so the situation is you're trying to meet up with your friend and you're having a difficult time 
uh, figuring out where they are. Okay. Hey, what's up? How you doing, girl? Where are you? What? What? No, stop. I'm confused. I need you to repeat that last part again. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> All right. You ready for the next one? All yep. right. Hey, girl, what's up? Where are you? I'm trying to find you. What? Yeah, you're not making any sense. You are terrible at giving directions. All right, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> so those are two possible responses to the situation. Again, tell me the difference between the two situate or to the between the two responses. <laughs> you can laugh at me. It's okay. Um, in the second one, you got like super agitated and like, yeah. you didn't even let the person kind of tell you because they were probably confused too. Right. So again, the difference is the first time I, I said, I, you know, I stated in a, how I was feeling, which was confused. And then I gave them a solution of, or, you know, a possible, um, a request, Right. Why are you why are you laughing at me, Casey? <laughs> that was hilarious. That's good. Good. I'm I'm glad you're feeling entertained. So the first one, yes, is an I statement because you're saying I, you're stating your emotion, and then you're giving um a possible solution. And then the next one, I was angry and I used the word you, right? And then I, I insulted them, saying that they were, you know, terrible at giving directions. Um, what might have happened in that situation with my friend had I said, you're not making any sense and you're terrible at giving directions? What could have happened if that's how I responded? They might not want to be your friend with you or like meet up with you. Yeah, it creates conflict or, you know, it creates tension between people. Now, if I responded with, uh, I'm confused, I need you to repeat what you just said, how might my friend respond to me? Um, they might re repeat it and yeah. like, still want to be your friend. Exactly. I mean, the, really what, like the, the, a big takeaway from the use of I statements or I messages is that it's there to clarify and it's there to resolve a conflict. It's not about creating more tension or conflict because that doesn't that doesn't create like a productive conversation between two people, um, especially when you're just kind of blaming or insulting people. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show you, I'll share my screen. I'm gonna just show you some I message do's and I message don'ts. And then we're gonna practice uh, writing up some I messages and then we'll move on to the next part, okay? Okay. So, Casey, some iMessage do's include trying to stay calm. You may be pausing and taking a deep breath might help, um, especially if you're feeling frustrated in the situation. You always start with the word I, then you share either how you feel or you share what you need or you want. So here, I don't know, can you see this purple statement that I'm highlighting? Yeah. Okay. Um, I might make it a little bit darker actually, just cause it's kind of hard to see. Um, so this situation would be if you, you know, let's just say you worked on a paper for school and you worked really hard on it and you got it back and you got a C. All right. The use of an I message would be something like this. I'm disappointed about the C on my paper. I worked really hard on it. Can we discuss my grade so I can understand why I received a C? So in this statement, you know, we did just what we said. We started with I. Um, what is the feeling that you're stating in this statement? disappointment disappointment and then the solution or what you need or want is what 
mm, to discuss the grade so they can understand why they received a C. Exactly. Exactly. So now let's move down to some of the iMessage don'ts. Um, when you're trying to use iMessages, you don't want to start with the word you. Uh, you want to try not to blame or insult the other person. And you definitely don't want to stay quiet in the moment and then talk about the other person later behind their back. Because again, this is not a productive way of solving whatever it is you're feeling. So an example of not using an I statement in this situation would be, you probably didn't even read my paper. This isn't fair. Or later on talking to a friend, you might say, that teacher just doesn't like me. He's so unfair. All right. Mm -hmm. well, those aren't really productive solutions um, to that kind of situation. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Good. So what do you think? I have some questions before we practice doing I statements. Um, what do you think are some situations when I messages might be ha helpful? Using I when talking. Say that about again. any problem. Mm -hmm. So especially when you're having a problem with somebody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was also thinking, you know, it's probably useful um, to even prevent like a further argument or conflict or to even preserve a relationship, right? The I messages are a much, you know, calmer, clearer way of trying to um, communicate what you're feeling without being fueled by a lot of like anger. And that doesn't mean you're not allowed to feel anger, right? It's just a way to sort of try to keep it in check. Um, I think it's really helpful, especially for teens, when you're communicating with, with teachers, parents, any adults in your life, they're going to really appreciate that, I think. Um, but it's, it's a good, useful tool to use in talking with anybody. Um, why, what are some barriers to using iMessages? Why do you think some people wouldn't use an iMessage? I don't know. So part of using iMessages are that you have to stop and take a moment and pause before you respond. And if you're feeling angry in a situation, how might you respond to it? And just quick and mean. Yeah, you're going to react with your emotions and you might react quickly. So this goes back to that statement I gave earlier. Have you ever said something out of anger or frustration and then later on you regret it? This is where an I message can help. And it's not easy. It's not easy. I think many people, teens, adults, it doesn't matter when we're feeling a strong emotion, the automatic response is to just react. So it takes practice to, to, to stop yourself, pause for a minute, Think about how you're feeling and communicate it and communicate it in a way where you can still be assertive, you know, and say what you need, but not not being argumentative. It's it's a kind of a fine line. Um, and sometimes, you know, even if you use I statements, people don't listen. Right. People don't listen or react. So that can make it frustrating to try and be the one who's communicating effectively and the other person is not open to it. That, that can make it challenging sometimes to use I statements. Um, so going back to that, that it can be difficult to use I messages, especially when we're feeling a strong emotion like anger or upset. Can you think of any strategies that you could use in the moment? Um, to, to get yourself back on track before responding to somebody? Do you, can you think of anything you can utilize to? Mm -hmm. You can use this method. Right, so I think part of this method is, if you remember in the iMessage do's, is do try and stay calm and maybe just taking like a five second breath before you choose your response or you choose your iMessage. Um, sometimes I count to 10 if I'm feeling really frustrated with somebody just in my mind. Um, so we're gonna go and we're just gonna practice three quick I statements, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna share my screen again.
and um, we'll read through the scenarios. You can don't don't mute your mic since it's just me and you, and I'll be asking for your responses, okay? Or your response. Okay. So do you want to read through the first scenario? This one that starts with CJ, I'll highlight it in, in red. Okay. Yeah. CJ's little brother, sister sometimes goes through Sorry. his personal belongings in his bedroom when he's not home. Okay. So CJ gets home. He realizes that his little brother or sister has been rooting around in his bedroom. Um, looking at all of his belongings. What do you think? Let's practice the iMessage uh, or iMessage statements. What is a possible iMessage that CJ can say to his little brother or sister? Um, I don't. I don't know. Okay, so let's let's think about how we create an iMessage. What do we start with? I. Okay, so I. <laughs> And then you're going to state a feeling. Maybe it's just simply, I don't what? Um, I don't like you in my room or something. Yeah, I, don't I don't like it when you come into my room. And then what's the solution? Please what? Please don't go into his room. Yeah, please don't go into my room when I'm not home. Right? Now, what do you think if you if you were CJ and you were feeling really angry, what's an example of not using an I statement? What what would he maybe do that's not an I statement? Probably just say you need to stay out of my room. Yeah, like hey, you're a little jerk, you know, go away, stop doing it. Calling his little brother a name, being angry. Um, but a lot of times when you call people names or you insult them, that's not going to make them want to stop doing it. It's probably going to make his little brother what? Mm -hmm. He's probably just doing it. Yeah, maybe just go it again. So this is just an example of a response that CJ could use. I don't like it when you come into my room. Please don't go into my room when I'm not home. All right, let's look at the next one. Tori, I'll highlight it in red. And I'll read it out loud and I want you to think of a possible iMessage statement, okay? So a tourist friend keeps borrowing money but never pays any money back. So what's something that Tori could say to Tori's friend? I want my money back. <laughs> well, let's first think about... Um, an I statement. So I, how, how would you feel if, if you kept lending your friend money and they didn't pay you back? Be um, honest. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Would you feel angry, annoyed, frustrated? Probably annoyed. All right. So you could say simply like, um, I am really annoyed uh because why because you keep borrowing money and never paying it back because you keep borrowing so you're stating you're stating it right you're not you're not accusing you're not insulting you're just saying i am really annoyed because you keep borrowing money and you never pay me back um and then you started saying casey your next statement could be um please pay me back uh, otherwise, what am I going to do? I'm not going to what? Loan you money. Yeah, I'm not going to loan you money. Right? So, I mean, it's as simple as that. You're stating how you feel and then you're giving a solution. Either you pay me back or I can't give you any money anymore, you know? Um, again, I think, what do you think a typical response of somebody might be that's not an iMessage? What would they you say, you need to pay me back. Yeah, or you know, you you're so greedy, you're so greedy, and you're so selfish, and blah 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 blah, right? But that's not productive. I mean, and maybe maybe Tori's friend is never going to pay him back. I don't know, but at least by using this iMessage, you're you're being very clear 
and you're being very direct about what you need. And that's that's the big message to take away from using I statements. All right, we'll do one more, okay? <laughs> well, I'm serious. Maybe this has happened to you. I don't know. Were you laughing at this at the scenario? Yeah. Yeah. So another student frequently touches Ari's ponytail. This is uncomfortable and Ari wants them to stop. I feel her. What's that? You feel her? Has that happened to you? Sometimes. Yeah, it's not okay. People feel like they have the right to just go up and touch somebody else's hair if it's different or, uh, you know, I, I don't know what people, what, what's in people's minds when they do that. Um, but I'm sorry that's happened to you. Um, so what do you think Ari could say to this person? And then let's think of it first in terms of the I message. I feel annoyed when people touch my hair or another student touches my hair. She could say or he could say, I feel annoyed when you touch my hair and then literally tell them to do what? I want you to what? I want you to stop, yeah. stop, touching, want you my hair. stop touching my hair. So, again, it seems like, you know, maybe it's not as, maybe it's easier to just react and say, you're a jerk. Stop doing that. But what that does is it tends to create further conflict, right? So maybe this person is a, is a jerk, right? Like, and they shouldn't be doing that. But if you end up calling somebody a jerk, what's their reaction going to be? They might do it again or call you one back. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to keep it going. And now that, that said, just because you say to somebody, you know, I feel really annoyed. I'm annoyed that you're touching my hair and I want you to stop. That's not a guarantee that that person's going to stop. But that person might sort of be taken aback and say like, oh, whoa, sorry. You know, I never realized that it was, I, I just think your hair is so beautiful and I just want to touch it <laughs> or whatever. And you're like, okay, but it's not yours. It's mine. Um, so that's just, that's kind of the, that, that's, that's the lesson in a nutshell is just that using those kinds of statements can help to, to make us some more, more effective in our communication with people and to still resolve situations without creating, um, creating more tension. Now I'm going to, would you like to learn how to say hello? You want to practice saying hello? in a couple yep. of languages. Yeah, I have to try this again because I don't know if you're going to be able to hear my computer. So keep your mic on and just when I start playing the video, tell me if you can or you can't hear it, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just a YouTube video that I found. Let's turn the volume up. I can do it. All right. So we're going to, I'll pause it after they show us the. Uh, All right, Casey, we're going to start with Chinese, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll listen first, and then you and I are going to practice saying it, okay? Okay. Yeah. All right, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Ning hao. Ni hao. I think so. It sounds like she's saying nin hao, but I feel like it's ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> okay, you ready for the next one? Yep. All right. Oops. Spanish. Hola. 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 All right, you're, you go, Casey. Hola. Hola. That's a pretty easy one. All right. We're going to skip to, there's a whole bunch on here, but
but I just chose six. And we're going to skip to French, okay? Mm -hmm. Bonjour. 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 That's pretty easy one. All right, you got this one. Oh. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. All right, Casey. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Guten Tag. Or what's the other way you said that they say it in Germany? Hallo. Hello, that's pretty simple. All right, we're gonna do Italian now. Ciao. 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 Ciao, ciao. All right, last one. Japanese, are you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Japanese. Japanese. It's really hard to hear it, but that is. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa, that's it. Here, we'll look how they spelled it out. All right. Konnichiwa. 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 All right. Cool. Let's see. All right. I want you to share. Oops. Oh, uh, a new way of saying hello that you just learned. Hmm. Bonjour. Bonjour. And I'll I'll say ni hao. Ni hao. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, the one thing that I forgot to do in the beginning and I'll end our session before we go into the office hours and we can play our little quiz game together um, and I'll stop recording. But I was going to ask that fun question, a fun question that Kellen has uh, been asking at the beginning of his sessions. And I've been trying to come up with one too. Um, my question was, Oh, what is your favorite thing to eat right now during quarantine? Or have you eaten anything strange that you don't normally eat? Mm. Do I answer both of them? Sure, if you want to. Okay. I like um, cheese sticks, like mozzarella sticks. Oh, like to dip in marinara, like fried cheese sticks? Yeah. All right. We don't have to dip in marinara. <laughs> and what's your second one? The weird thing is, I don't know, like I always get like the ice cream cones, but I don't put ice cream in it and I dip it in ginger ale. <laughs> what? <laughs> you dip the cone into ginger ale? Yeah, doesn't, and it's super good. Doesn't it get soggy? No, like I don't drench it in there. I just dip it and I eat it. Oh, okay. That is a little, little, little fun funky. Um, okay. Uh, what is my, so my favorite thing, for some reason, I don't know what's going on, but I can't stop eating pickles. I have pickles. Yeah. I just, I don't know what happened. I wish I would have bought and like, bought like seven jars of them because we've gone through most of our pickles. So we got to pick some more up tomorrow when we go shopping. And then, um, I don't know if I've had anything strange during, this time, but my friend dropped off a bunch of candy, which I don't really, I shouldn't have candy in my house because I just can't stop eating it. Like Tootsie Rolls, Tootsie Pops, <laughs> I'm just eating it. I'm eating it all. <laughs> okay, so cool. Um, I'm going to pause the live session. Just stick with me and we'll move on to the office hours, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. 